Once the legendary Mike Richter hung up his skates, New York was looking for their next star in the crease. However, after numerous attempts at finding a potential pairing, one Ranger scout would take the chance on one of the best goaltenders in Europe at the time. That goaltender would be Henrik Lundqvist, and he would be taken in the 7th round as a Hail Mary type of pick. That being said, Lundqvist wasn't a part of the Rangers' long-term plan, as they were set in stone on Dan Blackburn, who they drafted 10th overall 6 rounds earlier, and would also draft Al Montoya, who they chose 6th overall in 2004. But when Al Montoya Toya wasn't meeting expectations and Dan Blackburn would suffer a career-ending injury in practice, the Rangers would call upon the European netminder to fill the void, and he took that opportunity and ran with it. Lundqvist would break out onto the scene in the garden and wouldn't look back, breaking numerous franchise and league records all while taking the Rangers to multiple playoff appearances and eventually a Stanley Cup final. He would earn the nickname King Henrik and would serve as the Rangers goaltender for 15 years before signing with the Washington Capitals this offseason. Henrik Lundqvist is just one of the many unlikely success stories that the league has seen over the years, and he wouldn't be the only goaltender of the late 2000s to emerge into stardom. Tim Thomas wasn't the biggest name coming out of the University of Vermont in 1994, but nevertheless, he would still get drafted by the Quebec Nordiques with the 217th pick. Thomas, like Lundqvist, wasn't a part of the Nordiques' plans for the future, but unlike Henrik, Thomas would end up going on an 8-year journey throughout numerous leagues. Tim would start off playing in the ECHL and IHL up until 1997, where he would transfer overseas to HIFK in the SM Liga. Thomas would rack up an insane .947 save percentage while in Finland, and that would earn him an AHL contract with the Hamilton Bulldogs. Thomas would continue to bounce around the AHL, IHL, and Liga up until 2002, where he would finally make his NHL debut, but it was short-lived, and it would take Thomas an additional three years to make it full-time. And finally, at the age of 31 years old, Tim Thomas would begin to take off. Wait a shot, that directed across, outlet pass, and moving on in is Malone, Fakes. backhander, save, Thomas! Thomas would win back-to-back 7th Man of the Year awards with the Bruins between 2005 and 2006, and that success would lead to an unbelievable 2008 season, as Thomas would be voted into his first All-Star game, be named to the NHL first All-Star team for the 08 season, and would take home both the William Jennings Trophy and the Vesna Trophy, being on top of the hockey world. At age 34, Tim Thomas only had one goal in mind, the Stanley Cup, and in 2011, he would be able to take his team the distance, defeating Vancouver in seven games to hoist the Stanley Cup, eventually being named playoff MVP of that magical run. Thomas would finish his career adding on another Vesna during that same cup run and would be named to three more All-Star games. He would eventually fall off, however, after taking a brief break from the NHL. He'd attempt to come back with the Florida Panthers, but at age 38, Tim Thomas's best days of hockey were far behind him. Most newer fans probably have no idea who Fernando Pisani is, and if you weren't an Edmonton Oilers fan at the time, you probably didn't know who he was either. Fernando Pisani was never a big name guy. In fact, the most goals he'd produce in a single season was just 18. He was a mere depth player who could produce points when needed, and he further proved this claim during the Oilers' miraculous Stanley Cup Finals run in 2006. Ironically, this happened to be the year where Pisani would hit that career high 18 goal mark, tallying an eventual 37 points. But when the Oilers unexpectedly made the playoffs, Pisani wasn't the first player a lot of people had in mind. That Oilers team was highlighted by the legendary Chris Pronger, a young exciting Sean Horkov, and goaltender Dwayne Rolison, who was having a great season in net. But during critical moments throughout the Oilers' Cinderella run, neither of those guys had as big as an impact as Pisani did, as he would take the entire league by storm. During round one against the first Detroit Red Wings, Pisani would score two third period goals, which would help the Oilers take down the Wings in six games. Those goals were his fourth and fifth of the playoffs. In round two, Pisani would again have another two goal effort, including the game winner in game five, that would help Edmonton advance to the Western Conference Final. Pisani wouldn't make a big mark again until the Stanley Cup Finals, where he would ultimately save the team from losing out in five, scoring shorthanded in overtime to give Edmonton the win.
his final goal that run would be in Game 7, where, sadly, the Hurricanes would put an end to the Oilers' magical run. Pisani would finish the playoffs with a league-high 14 goals and 5 game winners, almost matching his goal totals from that regular season. As a reward for his efforts, he would sign a 4-year, $10 million deal, staying locked up in Edmonton in hopes of another run. Pisani would never be able to recapture the magic he had during the playoffs and would begin the decline in production as the years went on. But he'll forever live in infamy due to his unexpected success. Pavel Datsuk was an absolute legend during his time as a Detroit Red Wing, posting over 300 goals, 900 assists, being named to 4 All-Star games, winning 3 Selkie trophies, and 2 Stanley Cups. This is an extremely great amount of accolades, accolades he never could have won if it wasn't due to pure luck. Datsuk was eligible to be drafted in the 1996 entry draft, but every team would pass up on a chance to select him, leaving Datsuk to once again try and prove himself. He'd try again in 1997 and got the same result, and at this point, it seemed as if he'd never make it to the AHL, let alone the NHL. That is, until 1998 where Datsuk would decide to give it one last chance, and his patience, hard work, and determination was finally rewarded as the Red Wings would take a chance on the soon-to-be Russian great, drafting him 171st overall, meaning that Datsuk Suk had to wait for his name to be called over 700 times before he could finally have a chance at making it in the NHL, and when he finally got his shot, he made the most of it. In his rookie season in 2001, he would accumulate just 35 points, but that would eventually blossom into 51, 68, 87, an eventual 90 plus point campaign. That suit became a star at the NHL level, but perhaps could have been nothing more than a what if if he didn't give it one last go. Andrew Hammond is a name I'm sure not many of you have heard of, as he's been quiet as of late, but he was all the buzz in 2015, helping the Ottawa Senators go on a miraculous wildcard run. But before we get into what happened, let's rewind. Andrew wasn't heavily scouted playing for Bowling Green University, and because of this, he would fail to get drafted once he was eligible to do so. Luckily for Hammond, the Senators were willing to give him a chance, signing him to a cheap entry-level contract with no intent of utilizing him. In fact, he would only ever get called up once as his time as a senator, and that was after Sens starting netminder Craig Anderson would take a leave of absence and backup goaltender Robin Leonard would go down with an injury. It was this moment that would forever make Andrew Hammond an Ottawa legend. Miller across to Hayes, and he shot it into the goaltender. At the time, the Senators were nowhere near playoff contention, but Andrew Hammond would go on an absurd 23-game run, bolstering a record of 21-2, instantly helping Ottawa clinch a wildcard spot. Hammond's impeccable run would send shockwaves throughout the NHL, making everybody wonder who this Hammond guy really was. However, he would fall off almost as quick as he rose up, as after this remarkable stretch of games, he would return to being nothing more than a fringe NHL netminder who would be called up in case of an injury. But back in 2015, no one would believe you if you predicted that Andrew Hammond would be one of the hottest goaltenders in the league, which is what makes his story even greater. John Scott was nothing more than an enforcer trying to earn his keep, but despite this, he was still a fan favorite amongst the league, so much so that in 2016, NHL fans around the world would unite together to create NHL history. During the fan vote, you were able to vote in any player for captain if they weren't already on the list, and Scott, playing little to no role on his team at the time, obviously wasn't on that list, but he ended up getting a ton of votes, and because of this, he technically got voted in to the All-Star game to represent the Pacific Division. Once the NHL caught wind of this, they tried numerous times to make sure he couldn't play in the game, but their attempts were unsuccessful and Scott would go on to have one of the best performances perhaps in his NHL career. Scott would tally two goals en route to helping the Pacific Division win the All-Star game, and because of his efforts, the fans once again made sure Scott was able to get one final lap, as they would crown Scott the MVP of the All-Star game, allowing Scott to have one of the most unlikely success stories in the history of the All-Star game, leaving the league speechless, fans ecstatic, and Scott an infamous legend in hockey history. He's good, obviously. Um, it's, uh, it's good for the league. We have the kind of uh, guy who's going to be number one. You know, it's uh, it's it's not a joke. It's it's good, good stuff. He's a, he's a great guy, and uh, 
I think things like that are, are good for the game too.